Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really cool geometry puzzle inspired by my colleague Edwin Wallace. I'm going to share the link to his uh, tweet. Uh, that way you can kind of take a look at the problem that inspired me to do this video. Okay, let's get started. So we have two circles that are inscribed in a unit square as shown. M is a midpoint and we're supposed to find the radius of each circle. All right, let's start with the small one. So with the small one, I'm just going to go ahead and drop a perpendicular. Let's call that small r, okay? And I'll be making some uh, connections as always, right? So I'm going to go ahead and drop another perpendicular from this line here. All right, let's see. Okay, here we go. That should also be r, right? This is perpendicular. And what's really cool about this is that you can just go ahead and draw this segment here which is going to be super helpful and you're going to see a little bit in a little bit why. So we know that M is a point outside the circle. Two tangents are drawn, so they're going to be congruent. We get two congruent triangles. Actually, uh, they're right triangles, which is good. So I'm going to call this angle alpha and alpha because we know that that's going to be a bisector, right? Okay, we know that M is a midpoint and this is a unit circle. So this length here would be one half and the whole thing would be one. Okay, awesome. Now, what do we get from here? Well, we get a very important piece of information, which is what? Which is the uh, tangent. Okay, awesome. So now I, I need to find something for alpha and let's call this length A here. So I need to find A in terms of R because I'm going to be writing some equations that I will be using. But before that, I want to use uh, the basic fact uh, of trigonometry. So what do I know about alpha? Not really much, but I know that tangent alpha is equal to r over a. Nice. And then I can actually double alpha here and write it as tangent 2 alpha, right? And tangent 2 alpha belongs to a right triangle that we know of. So here's the right triangle that I'm talking about, right? So tangent 2 alpha is going to be 1 over 1 half, which is 2. Beautiful. So now I know that alpha and 2 alpha are both acute angles. So that uh, from tangent to alpha, I can find tangent alpha easily, numerically, right? But how do I find that? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. One method is using the formula for tangent to alpha. The second method is actually my favorite. You can just draw a right triangle like this one with two alpha being here, and it's not drawn to scale at all, obviously, right? And then just the hypotenuse will be root five. If you extend this base uh, as root five, then connect here, you're going to get an isosceles triangle, which is really nice, right? Take a look at this. So now these angles have to be alpha and alpha, right? So basically we can cut alpha to alpha in half. So from here, tangent alpha can be found. How? Well, tangent alpha is going to be two over root five plus one. And if I rationalize the denominator, multiply by root five plus root five minus one and root five minus one, which is the conjugate, uh, then you're gonna be getting tangent alpha being equal to what? Two times the square root of five minus one divided by these multiplied is gonna give us five minus one, which is four. And then we can go ahead and simplify this. So tangent alpha is gonna equal root five minus one over two, which is if used with this fact that it's gonna give us some relationships regarding R and A. Okay, let's go ahead and do that first. So if I set this equal to tangent alpha from here, I'll be getting r over a, which is equal to root 5 minus 1 over 2, right? So that gives me something nice. And then what I can do is I can actually go ahead and write another relationship. But for that one, I need to make more connections. Okay, cool. So what kind of connections do I need to make? Let's go ahead and make those connections. So I can just go ahead and connect these two. Let's change the color here, maybe blue. Okay, so let me make this connection here. Here we go. And now what is that gonna give me? Well, we know that this is one half, right? This length, because M is a midpoint. And we also know that this is A and the hypotenuse is this length. Okay, that's also important. What is the hypotenuse, right? Let me go ahead and extend it so you can see what's going on here. Let me go ahead and extend that little piece. Sometimes it just refuses to write. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm just trying to make a nice connection here. So we know that this is also the small r, 
And the whole thing is the radius of the uh, quarter circle, which is one because it's inscribed in a unit square, right? So this hypotenuse is gonna be one minus R then, right? So I do have a right triangle here that I can use. Here we go, right? That's the second relationship that I'm going to be using. So what is that gonna look like? It's gonna look like this, R squared plus one half or A plus one half squared, and then that's gonna equal the hypotenuse squared, which is one minus R squared. Okay, so now I do have these two relationships and obviously from here I can find the small r. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna use the other picture that I put here for, uh, for the big R, all right? So let's go ahead and proceed. Now, what am I gonna do? Well, what I need to do is actually, in this case, I can kind of isolate a plus one half from here. So let's go ahead and do that. a plus one half squared is just gonna equal one minus r squared minus r squared. r squared cancels out. We end up with one minus two r. And then if you square root both sides, and obviously this needs to be a positive quantity, right? Square root of one minus two r. And finally, you can add one, uh, actually not add, but maybe subtract one half from both sides and you'll get A in terms of R. Now it's important to get A in terms of R, not vice versa, because we're looking for the small R and it's better if you write everything in terms of R. Okay, awesome. So now I have this expression here and I have this expression right here. Let's see how we can use those together. Well, one of the things I can do is since A was expressed in terms of R, I can do the same thing here and then set them equal, right? So from this one, I'll be getting what? I can write A as 2R over root 5 minus 1. And as you know, we can just rationalize the denominator here one more time. And that's going to give us, here we're going to get a 4, so we can go ahead and cross cancel. It's going to leave a 2 here. So A is going to equal root 5 plus 1R divided by 2. So that's going to be my A value as well as this one. So we can kind of go ahead and set those equal to each other and solve for R. And that's going to give us the value of small r. Okay, let's see how this goes. I can just go ahead and write it as square root of 1 minus 2R minus 1 half being equal to square root of 5 plus 1 over 2 multiplied by R. Okay, so what I want to do is add 1 half to both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. And... That's gonna give me a better expression because now I'm ready to square both sides. Let's go ahead and square both sides. It's gonna give me one minus two R on the left. On the right hand side, we're gonna be getting this expression here, which is kind of special, right? Squared times R squared. And then we're gonna be getting their product times two, which is basically the first term because one half is reciprocal of two. So that'll be like this term here plus one fourth. Awesome. So this gives us a quadratic and we can actually go ahead and solve for the quadratic. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and set it up and uh, let's see what we get from here. We're going to be getting the square of this expression. So when you square that, you're going to be getting 6 plus 2 root 5. 6 plus 2 root 5 over 4. That'll be multiplied by r squared. Negative 2r, I'm going to go ahead and add 2r to both sides. So I'll be getting this expression plus 2 times the quantity r. And then I have 1 fourth minus 1 is going to give me negative 3 fourths. And the whole thing is equal to 0. So this is my quadratic. Obviously, you can just go ahead and make a common denominator. That's going to give you a 4. Then 1 plus 1, 5 plus root 5. So you're going to get a lot of radicals. You can just go ahead and multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of some of the fractions and so on and so forth. But I'm going to save you the trouble and give you the value of R that results from the quadratic formula because that's going to be a lot of work and you can actually do it if you want. But I've done it for you and here we go. The small R is going to end up being, and obviously there are two solutions, but notice that the product from Vieta is negative, so one of the roots is negative. We don't want that, so I'm going to take the one that's acceptable, negative 5 plus root 5 plus... When I do this, you'll, you'll appreciate the fact that I skipped this part because that's actually a lot of work, but here's the answer, and I checked it for you because otherwise this picture would not be right. Okay, cool. So then it's going to be divided by 4. So R is negative 5 plus root 5 
plus four times the quantity, square root of three minus root five divided by four. As you can see, that's kind of like a really, really radical expression. But that's the value of small r. Now we're gonna go ahead and find the large r. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. So how do you find the large r? For large r, I need to make other connections, obviously, right? So we do need more connections. Let's go ahead and do those. And let's use a different color here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect this here so I can take advantage of the fact that this is actually big R, right? Then I'll drop another perpendicular here. These are very important connections, okay? And then now this one, I don't know what it is. Let's call that H. I don't know what H is at this point, but here's another thing that I can do, which is super important. And you wanna do this because it's gonna give you a lot of good information. So let's go ahead and connect the center of the circle to the center of the semicircle. And as you know, the point of tangency is gonna give us good information because this is going to be big R. And we know that the whole thing is one, which is the radius of the quarter circle, right? So the hypotenuse here is going to be one minus big R, okay? Awesome. What else do I know? Well, this is supposed to be a big R. This is supposed to be a H, so that's a rectangle. Okay, so we do have a rectangle here, cool. Nice, okay. What else can I do? Well, I can make another connection here, like this one. I can connect these two, and then I can also make uh, more connections, uh, you know, like uh, maybe connect these two, right? And obviously the circles aren't touching each other at the same point that they touch the line. Obviously they're tangent to the line at different points because of their radii are different, right? So that's kind of what makes this problem more interesting because that's not very straightforward. Okay, so we do get a lot of right triangles here. Let's see what we have. This is a big R. So here's the critical part. Okay, so if I can find this length somehow, okay, or if I can get an idea about what it's gonna look like, then maybe I can just do something. But here's the thing. As is, I don't really have enough information, so I'm gonna be doing an extra connection. That's going to be an external connection. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe there's another way to handle this, but as far as I can see, this is the method that I use. So let's go ahead and extend this and I'll probably just extend this a little bit more, but that's okay, we can handle that later. I don't know how long we're gonna have to go. So here we go. Let's go ahead and make sure they meet. And this is important because what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take advantage of similarity. Beautiful, because the base of this triangle here, which I just drew, is parallel to one of the sides of the square, right? So we can take advantage of the fact that, and since this is a midpoint, that means we have like a two to one ratio. In other words, that's one half, this is one, right? Beautiful. And this is going to be root five over two, right? Correct? Okay, now, that is root five over two, good. What does it give us? Well, here's the thing. I want to find this length, right? I want to find this length here. So how can I find that length? Well, here's what we can do. First of all, we do have a common hypotenuse. So let me go ahead and shade these triangles so you know what I'm talking about. Maybe change the color here, uh, something like this. Green on green, I don't know how that's gonna look, but yeah, I think it looks good. All right, so now we do have these two right triangles and if you can find some lengths, that would be really awesome. For example, here, I do know that this piece is one half minus R, right? One half minus big R because M is a midpoint. If you subtract R, you'll get that. This is H, I know that this is the height. This is big R. Now I gotta find this length, but how do I find that length? Okay, here's the coolest part of this. Now, at point outside a circle, we're drawing two tangents to the circle, to the big one, right? So those lengths need to be congruent. So one plus H, so whatever this length is, uh, we can call that uh, Y, I don't know Y, but uh, we can just go ahead and call that uh, Y. And what we get from here is H plus one is equal to root five over two plus Y. But I'm looking for Y. So Y is equal to H plus one minus root five over two. Beautiful, okay. So what am I gonna do from here? Well, what I can do is I can use this length in this right triangle. Maybe I'll change the shading a little bit here. Okay, 
So now in this two right triangle, they're sharing the hypotenuse, right? So now I can write this following relationship. H squared plus one half minus big R squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is equal to big R squared plus Y squared, which is equal to H plus one minus root five over two squared. Beautiful. So now we were able to get a relationship between H and R. If I can find another one, then I am good to go. Okay. And where's the other relationship? It's going to come from another right triangle. And sorry for this problem. It's kind of a little complicated. Too much work needs to be done, but I hope you will enjoy the solution. And this is going to be the other triangle that I'm going to be using. Okay. And that gives us really good information because we know H and R is related. Let's find another relationship, which is going to look like H squared plus R squared is equal to one minus R squared. And of course, I'm talking about the big R. This is nice because what I can do from here is I can isolate H squared and solve for H. Let's do that. This is going to be one minus two R plus R squared minus R squared. They're going to cancel out. H squared is going to equal this. If you square root both sides, H is going to equal the square root of one minus two times big R. So now I was able to get H in terms of R and I do have another equation that relates H and Y. And if I put those two together, then I'll be getting the solution. Okay. So the process involves obviously a lot of work, but let me just set it up for you. So at least you can see what it looks like. And then again, I'll give you a break here and share with you what's going on. Okay, so h squared is equal to 1 minus 2r. So I can just go ahead and following up from here. I can replace h squared with that. Plus uh, 1 half minus r squared. This is good. It can stay. And then r squared, obviously, r squared is going to cancel out. So that's kind of nice. Plus, now h needs to be replaced with this thing here. Square root of 1 minus 2r. And now what I need to do is add that number, but that number can be simplified a little bit by making a common denominator. That's going to look like two minus root five over two squared. So we don't have three terms. We have two terms. Awesome. So when you expand this, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to be getting R squared. That's going to cancel out. So we're going to have a linear term on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you're going to have one minus two R with some numbers plus you have some number multiplied by the square root of one minus two r. So you're still going to have a radical and then you're going to isolate that radical and square both sides again and solve for big R, so on and so forth. Okay. And basically what that does is going to give you the answer, but I'm going to save you the trouble again one more time and give you the answer. But if you wanted to do it for yourself, go ahead and try this on your own. You are more than welcome to do so. But I'll give you the big R. The big R is going to be, the equation looks complicated, but the answer is not that complicated. It's going to be 10 root 5 minus 22. Okay. And if you're wondering what the H is going to be, that's going to be 5 minus 2 root 5. We're not supposed to find H, but let me just give it to you as a bonus. Okay. So these are the R values, the small circle and the large circle. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, interact. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.